Hey everybody, welcome back to the Old Swedes Farm. I want to tackle a topic that is really getting some play lately, and it's the old bird flu, our H5N1 bird flu. It's around, and yes, it's a, an issue, but the media's gotten a hold of it, and it is exploding in their uh, reporting. I thought, with all the reporting going on, I needed to dig in and try to find some truth here and what's going on. First, let me just say, the risk to us, to humans, very, very, very low if you use common sense. You can eat all the chicken you want. Just follow the guidelines like the CDC has always said and cook your chicken to 165. Cook your eggs and you will be fine. There's the, the human side of it. Now, a bunch of us have backyard chickens. Uh, we've got little flocks, big flocks. Uh, some of you have a couple chickens in the city. Uh, some of you got a bunch of them out in the country like us. There is some risk. So uh, let's go back. 1996, remember this way back, it uh, started in China, as it seems a lot of stuff does. Spread to Hong Kong the next year. We had a little blip in 2003. And then you really caught it on the media in 2014 and 15 when it came to the U.S. And I remember some of the reports then, like, you know, we were all, this was pre-pandemic pandemic. We were all going to die from the bird flu. The, the reporting got out of control. The most current phase of this started in the fall of 2020. Uh, mostly Europe, then it spread Middle East, and now by the fall of 2021, it was globally. How is it transmitted? It's transmitted over here um, a lot by wild birds. Now, a lot of wild birds uh, have migrated south for the winter. They're all hanging out together. They're all spreading and saying hi to each other. Um, and a lot of them have contracted it. Now they're following their, their flight patterns north to uh, breed and mate and, and hang out with their friends up north and spread out across the continent here in North America um, and they're spreading the disease. Right now, um, I looked at the CDC, I got a few stats here I'm going to read, but they have found that in wild birds they have detected it in 14 states. 14 out of, let's just use the lower 48, 14 out of 48. Not a big percentage yet. Commercial uh, chicken, uh, commercial flocks and backyard flocks, they found it in 14 states. Now I'm gonna put a CDC link down below where you can go, you can check out your state and see what your exposure is um, if you care. Um, I looked and most of the states where it was detected, Canadian geese, uh, mallards, uh, bur mostly it seemed like it was ducks and geese that were doing a lot of the moving of it that it was detected in. There were some bald eagles and other um, flocks of uh, other birds, but that was the main one I saw was ducks and geese. So what, what happens? Ducks and geese can spread it to other birds. Um, it is spread and the infection is spread through saliva, through mucus, and through feces. So I'm sure that's how it was spread down south. All the ducks and everybody are together they're dropping in the water, they're dropping near the water, it's washing in, uh, they've got saliva and they're, they're uh, drinking together, they're spreading it that way. Um, what are some of the symptoms for our, for our girls? You know, I've got, uh, Holly and I have got 44 girls, we're gonna get another 20 chicks. What are the symptoms? Total lack of energy, um, lack of appetite. Um, Kind of a loss of coordination I read about in several of them. Um, a nasal discharge, um, coughing and sneezing, um, they'll get diarrhea. Um, as far as laying, they're going to have low egg count. The, the eggs might be soft, uh, they might be misshapen. Um, there's also uh, puffiness in different parts of their body, so if you detect that, another symptom. So a lot of things, and, and as a Someone who's got a flock, you're always watching your girls. You're seeing if someone's really lackluster, if they're not eating, if someone's if someone loses coordination. Oh my God, you'd see that right away looking at your flock. So look for those things, uh, that lack of energy uh, and some of that. 
the CDC guidelines are pretty common sense, you know, and I, I look at what can we do. They said avoid direct contact with wild birds. Well, well uh, no, whatever, Sherlock, uh, of course. I, I don't go out and hang out with the robins and, uh, you know, try to catch them and all that. So avoid contact with wild birds. Um, if you've got birds or you notice birds, whether they're wild birds or your birds, that appear to ha be sick or dead, uh, avoid contact with them. Or, um, you, let's use common sense on this. If you've got a dead chicken or something, wear gloves. Put a bag over it and use the bag as your glove. Um, do some of that. If they're, if they're sick, use gloves to quarantine them. Then wash your hands with soap and water. Common sense stuff. Um, if you detect one or more of your flock that you suspect might have this, separate them. Get them away from the rest of your flock. Quarantine them. I don't care where you do it, but quarantine them. Um, if you're getting new birds, quarantine them. We're going to have 20 chicks, hopefully, within a month or so. They're going to be, well, they're going to be in the house to start with uh, as little chicks. Then we've got our other coop. Um, and they're going to spend months in that coop uh, and then they're going to be in a fenced in area away from the other girls. I don't want any contact between them just in case they came from the hatchery with that. I would suspect that if they came from the hatchery they would pass away before they got out with the rest of the flock but we're not going to take any chances. If you get new chicks don't throw them in with the rest of your flock until they've been there quite a while. You know you, you want to keep the size difference uh, separate anyway so um, so they're not pecked on. Um, some things that we're doing, you know, I, I, I talked to Holly about it. There is no way for us to quarantine our girls, to totally separate them from the outside world and other birds. You think we do. We've got a beautiful pole barn and we, they were inside the pole barn, shut for a lot of it, for the winter. Are they away from other birds? Nope. Sparrows found a way in through the through a little crack up in the rafters and they would uh, stay in at night Well, they're dropping around the pole barn. I'm sure around the girls. I've caught them more than once down at the water uh, sharing the water I've caught them in the feeder several times. So, you know a, a, a mallard flies by and drops and then a sparrow investigates it and now maybe the sparrows got it and then brings it to my flock. There's no way to uh, there's no way to separate the things, so um, we just use common sense. Uh, every week or so uh, since we read about this, I've been cleaning the uh, the water dish, and you should. Uh, the, our water, that uh, our heated water, um, we're using a bleach, 10% uh, bleach solution, and cleaning out all of that uh, once a week, making sure that that's nice and clean. The little, uh, you know, our mass feeder. Uh, where we've got those PVC, uh, the, the pipes where they can put their head in. We're wiping that out. Again, that bleach solution, keeping things clean. Uh, if there's any debris, um, you know, we're good about putting more straw down. Collect that poop. I just cleaned the pole barn out. Keep things clean. That's going to be your best defense. Um, is there any way around it? I don't know. Uh, how big is this? How bad is this going to get? I don't know. Should we get all fired up about it? No. Let's keep calm, but let's clean. Let's make sure our, um, our coops, our roosting areas, everything is clean and be on the look, uh, look out for things. If you've got a chicken that's sick, if you see a wild bird that's sick, is that going to happen? I don't know, but just be aware that it's around. Um, really nice video that I saw today from uh, Eric and Monica down at Bland's Promised Land Ranch. Uh, great channel, if you haven't checked them out, please do. I'll put a link down below to their video, um, but they did one about that, and Eric's great about, uh, you know, don't believe the hype, uh, and please don't. This, this is gonna get hyped up. Um, there, there's no COVID to hype up anymore, so now they're gonna go uh, H5N1, I think, uh, is gonna be the new thing to scare everybody with. So check out their video. It's great about partnering with other farms and others in your community, in your area that might be homesteaders um, as a way to keep you know different flocks, to share things, to work together. Great video. Um, 
if you've got questions uh, on H5N1, I've tried to do a bunch of reading on it uh, the past couple days, really kind of get knowledgeable about it um, because there's a lot of hype out there. Put your questions down below. Um, send me an email direct through the channel if you got other questions, if you got concerns. If I'm off on something, please correct me and let me know. Um, it's a serious topic, but I don't want everybody to get all fired up about it. We need to just be practical, take steps to prevent things, keep an eye on everything. We should all be good. So um, put those comments down below. Really love to hear from you um, and, and what to do. Uh, you know, if something does happen. So um, maybe I'll have a follow-up video on this, but appreciate everybody watching. Hopefully this uh, helped calm things a little bit and give you a few steps and what to look for. Hopefully we won't have to deal with it, but if you do, you know what to do. All right, everybody, thanks for watching and uh, appreciate you checking out the channel. Take care.